welcome back to our next class on the concept of the centroid and post system resultant processes procedures rather let's solve few questions on the concepts which we have already discussed okay regarding the centroid of the few geometrical figures like a rectangle we have a question it says determine the resultant force and specify where it acts on the beam measured from a we have a beam as given if you look at this beam this is called i have been saying since previous lectures that this is called a pin support this is called a pin pin support and this is what we call as a roller support okay in your mechanics of materials first that's in your next semester we will be discussing what we mean by a pin support and roller support but we can say that at least here that a beam needs supports and one way of supporting the beam is by having a roller at one end and a pin at another end a beam having pin at one end and roller at another end is called a beam with is called a simply supported beam we say this is a uh, this is a simply supported beam this is a simply supported beam okay now uh, let's go ahead and try to discuss more what we have to see what we have to do in this question it says determine the resultant force and specify where it acts on the beam measured from a the question is like we have to replace we have to replace we have to replace all these forces acting on the beam by a single force okay we have to replace all the forces acting on the beam by a single force see as far as this free end is concerned from free end to end a we are having a uniformly distributed load acting whose intensity is 6 kN per meter from end a to end b we are having uniformly distributed load of 9 kN per meter acting from end b to the free end we are having uniformly distributed load of intensity 3 kN per meter acting so it means at different spans of the beam at different spans of at different portions of the span we are having a beam we are having beam having different intensities of loading from free end to end a we are having 6 kN per meter from end a from point a to point b we are having 9 kN from point b to free end we are having 3 kN we have to replace all these loads by a single load see what we will do look into the from free end to end a okay the load is in the form of a rectangle okay i have already told you the total load when you have a distributed load the total load the resultant load because of a distributed load is equal to the area under area under the diagram okay area under the load diagram if you look here the area of this load diagram is the area of this load diagram is is equal to its its length is 1.5 meter it's 1.5 meter multiplied by its height as far as its height is concerned that is 6 kN per meter 6 kN 6 kN per meter so meter and meter will cancel so area becomes equal to 1.5 multiplied by 6 that is 9 kN okay so it means as far as this force of 6 kN is concerned we can replace this force of 6 kN per, per per meter we can replace this force of 6 kN per meter acting on a span of 1.5 meter by a single force whose value is how much 9 kN you can replace this load by a single load whose magnitude will be 9 kN okay this is what we have already done now the question is where this load will be acting this load will be acting at the centroid of this rectangle okay this load will be acting this load will be this load of 9 kN that is we are replacing this uniformly distributed load of this intensity 6 kN per meter by a si single load by a single load whose intensity is whose intensity is 9 kN 9 kN now the question is where we will place this 9 kN we have to place it at the centroid now where is the centroid of a rectangle the centroid of a rectangle as we have seen is at a geometrical center if its length is 1.5 then its centroid will be at the center having having distance 1.5 divided by 2 so it means we can replace we can say 
that this force of 9 kN we can we have to show it here okay we have to show it here such that this distance this distance will be 1.5 divided by 2 this is 1.5 divided by 2 that's equal to 0.75 meter that is 0.75 meter this force okay how much will be this distance from here to end end that will be 0.75 again because total distance is 1.5 so we have replaced this load of 6 kN per meter acting on a span of 1.5 by a single load whose intensity is whose value is 9 kN now let's talk about this the load acting on the on, on the span on the portion ab the area ab under ab is equal to this area is equal to its length that is 3 meter multiplied by its height which is given to us as 9 kN per meter 9 kN per meter so 9 into 3 that's equal to 27 kN okay so it means the the load this 9 kN per meter acting on a span acting on a length ab can be replaced by a single load this can be replaced by a single load whose magnitude is equal to 27 kN but the question is where this is this load acting this load will also act at the centroid of this rectangle whose side is 3 meter so we know for a rectangle the centroid is at the geometrical center therefore we can place this load of 27 kN we can place at its center okay we can say that this is acting at the center such that this distance is the distance from here to here is 3 by 2 that is 1.5 meter 1.5 meter okay 1.5 meter and this uh, load is the load acting is 27 kN 27 kN same we will do with this end from point B to the free end. The area is 1.5 meter multiplied by 3 kN per meter. 3 kN per meter. Meter meter will cancel. So it is 4.5 kN. This is 4.5 kN. So again this force we will place at its centroid. The centroid will be 1.5 divided by 2. So we will say that at the center the force acting is 4.5 kN 4.5 kN 4.5 kN and it's acting at the center the distance from here to here will be 3 by sorry 1.5 divided by 2 that is 0.75 so in step 1 we have replaced each force we have replaced each uniformly distributed load by a single concentrated load now on this beam there are three loads acting we will replace all these three loads by a single load that is what we will do so we have the so what we will be doing it let's what we will do we will replace all these three loads by a single load now let's replace them by a single load So we have at and A in this portion we are having a load of sorry we are having a load of the load acting is we are having load act, load is acting here at the center the load is acting here at its center the load is acting here at the center. Now we will replace all these three loads by a single load which we can do as we have done previously that is the values are this value here is this value is 9 kN this value here is 27 kN so this is 27 kN of load and this load is 4.5 kN okay and this load is acting at the center so this is point O we have to find the resultant we have to find the resultant of these three forces as measured from point A. Now the question is, is this problem is now reducing to the previous problems that we have done. We had more than one concentrated loads acting on the beam. We had to replace them by a single load. So what we'll do, summing up all the forces. Once you sum up all the forces, since these forces are acting along negative y direction, summing up all the forces along y axis, we will say this is 9, this is 27. This is 4.5. The total load will be uh, 40.5. The total load is 40.5 kilonewton. 
45.5 kN. Actually, we are summing up minus 9 kN because it's acting downwards. Minus 27 kN, minus 4.5 kN, that comes out equal to minus 40.5 kN. So this is, that means that these three forces can be replaced now by a single force. Okay, we can replace these three forces, these three forces we can now replace by a single force whose magnitude is, whose magnitude will be, whose magnitude will be 40 kN acting downwards. Okay, so we'll be replacing these force, these three forces by a single force whose magnitude will be 40.5 kN minus, it means it's acting downwards. But how far away it will be from the point A? It will be at a distance, say for example, it will be at a distance X. It will be at a distance X from end A, such that the moment of this 40.5 kN about an X is passing through point A will be equal to the individual moments of this 9 kN force, 27 kN force and 4.5 kN force about an axis passing through point A, the way we have been doing it previously. That is, we are placing this 40.5 kN force at some point at a distance x from end A, okay, such that its moment will be equal to the moment of, resultant moment of the individual forces. Now, look here. The moment because of this 40.5 kN force acting at a distance x from point A will be equal to 40.5. The moment of it will be equal to 40.5. 40.5 multiplied by x. 40.5 multiplied by x. 40.5 is in kN, x is in meter. Therefore, unit will be kN meter. And this 40.5 kN force is trying to rotate the beam. It's trying to set the rotation in the beam in the clockwise direction. Okay, it's trying to move the entire beam clockwise. That's why we'll write it minus. Okay, this moment should be equal to the moment produced by individual forces. The moment produced by this 9 kN force will be 9 kN multiplied by its force arm from point A. Okay, since this is acting at the geometrical center of 1.5, the distance from here to here will be 1.5 divided by 2. That's equal to 0 0.75, 0 0.75 meter. Okay. And the rotation is, this is trying to rotate it in anti-clockwise direction. We'll take it as positive. Then we have the moment because of this 27 kilonewton. We have 27 kilonewton multiplied by its force arm. Its force arm from point A, because we have to take all the distances from point A, it will be 3 by 2, that is equal to uh, 1.5 meter. And again, its 27 is also trying to rotate it clockwise, we'll write it as minus. Then we are here at 4.5, this is also clockwise, this will be minus 4.5, multiplied by the force arm measured from point A. The distance from here to here is 1.5 divided by 2, that is 0 0.75, plus this 3 meter, that is multiplied by 3.75. The reason for 3.75 is, the reason for 3.75 because we have to take all the distances from point A. It is 3 meter plus 1.5 divided by 2, that's 3.75. So once we perform the calculations, this is minus 40.5 into x comes out equal to, let me quickly perform the calculations. This is 9 into 0.75. This is 0.75 into 9. That's equal to 6.75. This is 6.75. Minus 27 into 1.5. 27 into 1.5. That's equal to 40.5. This is 40.5. Then we have 4.5 into 3.75 that's equal to 16.875 so we'll write 16.875 okay we'll add them up we'll write uh, we'll perform it 6.75 minus 40.5 then minus 16.875 this is this comes out equal to this is equal to minus 50.625. So minus 50.625 is equal to, the right hand side is minus 40.5 into x. So minus and minus will go, therefore the value of x comes out equal to 50.625, 50.625 divided by 
forty point five. Okay, that is equal to fifty point six two five divided by forty point five is equal to one point two five. Since we have measured x in meters, therefore it will be one point two five. That is one point two five meter. That means the problem now gets reduced to you can replace all these forces. You can you can replace all these forces by a single force. All these forces can be replaced by a single force. You can replace all these forces by a single force whose uh, these forces can be replaced by a single force. Not here exactly. These forces can be replaced by a single force here, whose magnitude will be forty point five kilonewton. Forty point five kilonewton, and this force will be acting from end A. From end A, the force arm must be from end A. Its distance measured from end A, that is this distance, should be equal one. Point two five meter. This is it. Okay. So you need not to write this force. We need not to write this nine kilonewton force. You need not to write this. Just replace all these forces by a single force of forty point five acting at a distance of one point two five meter. The effect will be same. This is how we use the concept of centroid in solving the problems. Okay. So in the same way, we have some more questions based on the same procedure and the pattern. Like we have, uh, I can say, uh, let me talk about few more questions based on the same pattern, uh, which have, which includes the force distribution among the rectangle. Rest of the questions are like, which involve the force distribution uh, as, as measured with the help of the triangle, triangular loads, okay? For example, here you have a rectangle and a triangle, okay? So in the same way, you have a trapezium, which can be re reduced by, reduced to a rectangle and a triangle, okay? So this is how, these types of force systems are to be solved. Now, in coming lectures, the problem we'll be discussing will be the centroid and the force system resultants for the geometrical figures, whose, uh, uh, which will be in the form of the triangle, that is triangularly distributed loads. Thank you very much.